In the recent Falcon 2.8 update, there was a new oscillator added to help us with working with textures and soundscapes when we're doing our sound design. And that is aptly named the Texture Oscillator. And in this video, we're gonna take an in-depth look at that. So let's go ahead and create a new program. And we can find the new Texture Oscillator here within the Oscillator browser. And it's actually contained within the Synthesis folders. So we can expand that out. And then down at the bottom here, we have Texture. So let's open up our mapping. And another thing we could do is just right click here and come to the Create Key Group. Let's choose Synth Template. And I'm gonna click and hold here on the tab and come to the Texture. Let's collapse our mapping window. Okay, so at the heart of the texture oscillator, we can play back two different samples. We have two different waveform views that we can see here and a variety of parameters that we can go make use of to adjust our sound. So we're gonna take a look at each of these parameters. And first we will just play this back to hear how this default sound sounds like. Okay, so these presets are really gonna be made to be layered with other sounds, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we're gonna focus on just playing this back and looking at the different parameters and how we can achieve different sounds. So here, starting at the top right-hand corner, we have default. This is gonna be our default setting. We have a couple of different waveforms that are loaded, but we can click on this menu here and choose the next one here. We have breath. And keep in mind, one thing to keep in mind is that these samples will play back as they would in a traditional sampler. So as you play higher, they're gonna be pitched up and play back faster. As you play lower, they're gonna play back slower and be pitched down. So that's something important to keep in mind when you're deciding which samples that you wanna use within your texture oscillator. So we can also use these arrows to navigate to the next one. We have Climat, so we can use the right arrow. Okay, and we have a couple here with transients in them. Now, we are, we have a handful of presets that we can start off with and make use of. Um, within the oscillator itself, we have two different windows for our waveform. So if I come to the top here, we can see the name of the audio file or the sample that's included within each one. Now here we have the down arrow, we can choose a different sample and these are grouped by type, so at the top we have attack, choosing that. Let's come to the center here and we have a mix. And if we, we can use this to mix between the two samples. So I'm gonna take this all the way to the left. So we're just focusing on this first sample window. Okay, and now that we've selected this, we can use the left and right arrows to navigate to the different samples within each category. Okay, let's come to a different category, maybe the Orchestra, let's come to the top. Again, right arrow. Now if we wanted to bring in the second sample here, then we would just come back to that mix knob that we took a look at in a second ago. Okay, so there's gonna be several different playback modes for our samples, and let's come back to the left. So we're just focusing on this, and I'm gonna choose something with an attack here. So let's try this one out. Okay, we'll roll with this one. So by default, we start off in a play, just play forward at one time. So if I press and hold, we just play this back one time. We then have a play forward, repeat. So as I press and hold, that's gonna continue to play back as long as I hold. We then have reverse one time, press and hold, we play back in reverse one time. And then finally, we have a reverse in loop or repeatedly. Pressing and holding, that's gonna play back repeatedly. So these are the four different playback modes that we have. And then over to the right, we have gain for each. These controls are gonna be discrete for each of the sample windows. So at the top, we have gain. We then have pitch.
and we have panning. Let's hold Alt and click to take these back to the default. And again, these are going to be the exact same controls over for our second window here. And also, as we saw with our first window, the menu where we can make choices of the different samples, we can do the same for the second window here. Okay, let's change up our sample and move on to some of the parameters down at the bottom. I'm going to choose one of the nature ones here. Okay, so next in line we have sample start. And as you can imagine, this is going to choose where the playback starts for our sample. So this is going to apply to both different samples. So when we're at 0%, we're always going to start at the beginning. And you can see for both samples, they're starting at the beginning. But if we were to come to say 50%, as you can imagine, we're going to start in the center of our samples. Okay, now down at the bottom, we have a random knob here. So when we take this up, this is going to play back randomly, a random start position for both of our different samples. So as I continuously, repeatedly trigger rather. Okay, you can see we're starting playback in different areas uh, of our samples. Let's take this back to zero. And I'm going to choose a different sample again. Okay, so then we have frequency and bandwidth. And this is going to apply to our band pass here. We can activate that by clicking on the this button. So clicking once. And again, this is going to apply to both of our samples. We can adjust our frequency for the band pass and the bandwidth. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Again, we can activate and deactivate by clicking here. We then have a button for powering on and off our peak filter. So activating that, we can adjust the frequency, the gain, Let's again choose a different sample. Maybe the or orchestra. Okay. Let's actually come to the machines. I'm trying to find something that's not too harsh. I don't want to torture you guys with some of the higher pitch sounds. Okay. We'll roll with this. Our uh, peak filter is on. So you can hear how that's affecting our sample. We then have Q. Okay, so these are pretty straightforward controls, but just the most important thing to keep in mind is that our uh, peak filter and our band pass are going to affect both samples when we make use of them. So for now, I'm going to power this off and then all the way to the right here, we have high pass and low pass. So as you can imagine, as we increase the high pass, this is going to take out the lower frequencies. Okay. Coming back to the bottom, we reintroduce those lower frequencies and our low pass is going to cut our high frequencies. Okay, let's adjust our mix to bring in our second sample. And then in the center, just above our mix knob, we have a legato button. So once we activate the legato, it's going to stop the re-triggering of our samples. So you can see each time I press a pad on my controller, these are being re-triggered. Once I activate the legato, then this is going to continue to play back. When we're working with a sample that has a transient like this, it's going to stop playback altogether. Okay, so these 
have been all of the parameters for our texture oscillator. And then right now we'll just come over to our program here and I'm gonna right click on this and add an additional layer. Let's come to that layer and come to our mapping and I'm going to add a synth template. Let's change this to wavetable. And let's just find a random wavetable here that we can just quickly create a patch using the texture oscillator. Okay, so I'm gonna select the try saw. I'm gonna take the gain down on this. Let's collapse our mapping window and I would like to add some modulation to the wave index. So I'll come to the layer and new LFO. I'm gonna take the depth down. Okay, let's add some extra voices. I'll take this up to three. Let's get some wave spread, change it to stereo. Take the detuning up in our stereo spread. Let's enable the FM. Actually, I don't like that, so we'll take that off. And since we have high frequency content, we're making use of the texture oscillator. I'm gonna take out some of the high frequencies from our wavetable, just so we can hear our texture oscillator a bit more. So let's expand out our key groups. I'm gonna to come to the effects and add a filter. Let's just put a Salon key. Increase the cutoff. And I'm gonna put some delay on this. I'll actually use the new delay, the dual delay X that was also recently added in the 2.8 update. I like the dark little room, so I'm gonna choose that. And some reverb. Okay, now let's come back to our layer one where we have the texture oscillator. And again, we could start off with some of the presets here. Let's go to the default and use the right arrow to navigate through these. Again, we can use the arrows here to change the sample.
Okay, and something else that I totally forgot is that we can bring in our own samples into the texture oscillator. So uh, what we could do is come to the file browser, clicking on the folder here, then I've actually put my samples in this area here under places, my sample library. So we can expand that out. Let's come to the miscellaneous sample libraries and we'll go with the native instruments form. And then what we could do is just click. We'll choose this one. It's not really gonna work too well with this patch, but who cares? We'll just click and drag that to the window just to show you that we can, uh, we have this option when working with the, this oscillator. So now, let's actually solo. Our texture oscillator. And I'm gonna take the mix over to this, the sample that I brought in. Let's, this is on random, so it's jumping around everywhere. We wanted to start that at the beginning. Let's turn off our filters. Okay, so if you, a lot of us have large sample libraries, so this expands out the potential for this um, oscillator as well. Adjusting the pitch. We can change the playback, of course. Let's take the sample start up so we start closer to the actual audio information. Okay, so you get the idea. Uh, working with your own samples is gonna just further expand the potential of this device, along with making use of some effects and adding other oscillators as we did in our layer two with our wavetable oscillator. So we've covered all of the parameters for the new texture oscillator, and I hope that this video has given you a better idea of how you can go about working with it to achieve new sounds in your sound design work within UVI Falcon. Okay, we'll wrap up here. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.